Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and it's our favorite time of the week because we're taking a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. So sorry we didn't have a, uh, a video earlier this week on Tuesday like we usually do. Uh, I was out sick, unfortunately. My little uh, petri dish of a child brought some uh, some something fun back from daycare, but we're everything's good. We're all fine now, and it's new knives of the week time. So we're gonna start off with a couple of Protex and one of the most gorgeous Malibus that we've ever had, fresh from the I believe this was from the uh, Blade Show Texas um, show actually, um, but check this bad boy out. It is titanium for the frame three or for the handle 3D machined titanium, not aluminum like most. It is a, I believe a magna cut blade. Yes, it is with mirror polished compound grinds. Very, very cool. And a swedge and the tip of the, uh, or kind of the, the top point of this reverse Tonto blade shape kind of rounded over a little bit kind of leans it a little more into that sheep's foot territory. So, so cool. So beautiful. We've got a mother of pearl gold lip mother of pearl button inlay, deep carry clip flush mounted and in, flush mounted screws and inset in the handle. And the action is Malibu. Perfect. Sorry for my ineffectual wristing right there. Just absolutely gorgeous. Now you're probably not going to expect this to be cheap. And I'm not going to disappoint you. This is a thousand bucks right now. Oh boy. But it is absolutely stunning. I gotta say and cheaper than uh, less expensive, I should say than some of the uh, really expensive engraved versions of the Malibu we've had. So bargain. No, sure. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even going to try to sell that very cool. In any case, uh, we also have uh, some of the first batches of the full sized rock eye folders, less George design from Protec. 250 bucks for this all blacked out version. Aluminum handle scales, black coated blade CPM D2, which is not D2. For the folks out there that are gonna, gonna comment, it's gonna happen, say, can't believe it's that much money for D2 blade steel. Well, it's CPM D2, which is not D2 blade steel. Let's let's be perfectly clear on that. It is if you're curious, if you're still with me, if you're not angrily typing out in the comments right now, CPM stands for crucible particle metallurgy. So it is a particle steeled version of D2, which maintains the edge retention of D2, which is up there. I've seen things that put it somewhere around like stuff like 3V or S35, that sort of thing. But it's never been a particularly tough steel. The CPM process, however, makes it a whole lot more tough. So let me ask you this, posit a question here. If this blade were 3V, would that price seem appropriate to you? If so, CPM D2 is not a bad thing either, I think. Now, all that being said, I know some of you are still going to uh, make your voices heard in the comments, and that's okay. That's what the comments section is for. It is? Indeed. Well, I'm out of the loop. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. Well, here is the knife. It is a very cool thing. You've got a really nice handle. It's got an element of neutrality to it, even though it does have a nice aggressive finger groove and a very aggressive finger guard, which is quite nice. Blade length is about three and three eighths, classic drop point shape and great Protec automatic action, standard pocket clip with a uh, pretty, uh, pretty wide ranging three hole pattern, or pretty standardized uh, three hole pattern clip setup here. So there's a lot of aftermarket stuff that could fit this even if it's not specifically marketed as a replacement for this particular knife. Very, very cool. This would also be a good time to talk about the giveaway that we're doing right now involving a Malibu and a rock eye, just not these two. We have right now link in the description to the uh, the entry page, we're giving away two Malibus and one uh, short bladed rock eye fixed blade in partnership with Protec here. Very, very cool. You can check these out or, or you can follow the link I should say to figure figure out ways to see the ways you can enter. There's ways to get multiple entries to this, but it's very, very cool. These Malibus 
Is the plural of Malibu Malabai? Uh, Malabex. These Malabexies. I don't know what we're doing here. Um, Worn cliff blade, stone wash finish, magna cut blade steel, and milled blade or milled handle finish here. But there are two of them. They flip great because it's a Malibu. And they might be yours. Uh, also, the uh, the short bladed rock eye sub three inch blade S thirty five VN steel orange G ten handles black coated blade, awesome little EDC blade. I think can make a, a decent backup tactical knife. Of course, small hunting knife or camping knife for sure. But for me, this is just a great EDC fixed blade option. I think very very cool. Check out the links below. Check out the link below to the entry page, and just a fair warning. We're going to see scammers try to get in on this. Contacting people say, hey, you've won this or that. Contact us here to see if blah, 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 blah. Don't listen to any of that. The winner will receive an email from Seth V, our, our, my occasional co-host here on that channel. Don't believe the fake profiles popping up. Don't believe the comments on the Instagram page that's going to be up as well saying, you've won. Contact us here. It's bupkis, I tell you. Pretty good clue when they misspell our name. That's the other thing. Knife center with like an extra E or an extra letter in it there happens all the time. We wish Instagram would do something about it. We keep reporting the profiles. It would help if you folks keep reporting the profiles as well. And I say Instagram because that's where these scammers primarily tend to crop up these days. We can't stay ahead of them and Instagram doesn't really seem interested in keeping ahead of them either it seems. Don't report us by accident. Yeah, don't report us by accident. Report you, you're sketchy Thomas behind the camera over there. That's why I don't show my face. We've got a lot of cool ProTex in stock right now, besides the uh, the two new ones here I just showed you. In fact, you know, we pulled a few extra. I don't even didn't even have them on the table. PT Strider with polished Magna Cut blade, compound grinds. Nutrizola AT, was it ATCF. I'm I'm messing everything ProTex up today. No, that was right. It is the ATCF, isn't it? Probably. Several different ones of these in stock. Also, Magna Cut blades. I really like the uh, the marbled carbon fiber here, but I didn't have them on the table because I was running out of room. But I just left them over here, so I got excited. They're awesome. More cool stuff at the ProTech page. <laughs> Links below. Shall we move on to the next one? Uh, speaking of Blade Show Texas, uh, the Wee Knife Ziphius. This is one of the uh, the several new Wee and Civivi knives that dropped yesterday. Uh, the Ziphius in particular, which this is an example right here, won uh, the best factory folder and uh, best in show on the factory side of things at Blade Texas uh, just a couple short weeks ago. They're in stock right now. This is one of the uh, the mid tier versions of the Ziphius uh, coming in at about three hundred and fifty nine dollars. Uh, there are some less expensive ones, not terribly less expensive. Uh, but there's also a Dama steel version that's you know, $640 or so. This one I think looks the best. It's the combination of the two tone blade right here, 20 CV steel, 3.7 inches, straight up worn cliff with kind of a harpoon pointed treatment. Kind of, it's, it's kind of way back. We might not want to call that harpoon pointed uh, worn cliff, but no matter, it's cool. High flat grind, thin enough blade steel. That's going to be a really, really acute piercer and a pretty efficient slicing blade. Titanium handles. The back piece right here is kind of, you know, an integral piece. It is a single piece of titanium. Really cool finish on it. Chidori flamed uh, is the name of it. Matches the pivot ring there on both sides. Matches the milled pocket clip too. I mean, doesn't that just look fantastic? I ask you. Let us know in the comments. It flicks great as well. It's another button lock design, just like the Malibu is. Flipper works well. Wrist flicking action works well. Thumb studs are great. Let's see, can I do a reverse flick? Haven't tried yet. No problems whatsoever. Plenty to hold on to too. If you're not going to use this as a showpiece and you want to actually carry these things, more power to you. It's going to feel great and do a lot of big work. Uh, let me see the uh, the least affordable, or sorry, the least affordable. The, uh, the, the least expensive way to get into uh, this knife would be about $344. And that would be uh, just with a uh, backspacer of carbon fiber as opposed to 
the titanium right here. So still not cheap, still not uh, affordable, shall we say, but a little bit less than this one at least. Very, very cool knife. Next up we have, oh, limited edition too. I should also account for that. Uh, next up, we have another limited edition. This is the Murata from We Knife Company, the Anton Chachenko design, uh, 297 for this flamed titanium version right here. Very, very cool finish. Not finisher we don't see as much of anymore, but I'm glad to see We still doing it uh, because I like it. 3.7 inch blade here as well, trailing point with a little bit of a, a clipped off tip right there, two tone, hand rubbed satin finish or two, two direction uh, finish. I think the, uh, the flats themselves are uh, machine finished, but the bevels are hand, hand rubbed finished, I think. The handle, if it, I didn't already mention, was titanium, because of course it has a flamed titanium finish. I really like the clip here on the back. It's got, it's a milled clip, but it has some sweep to it, some dimension kind of up and down, which you don't always see. A lot of times they come up and are flat. We've got a little hint of a wave here. I love the way it tucks in to the tail section of the knife here. And I love the hidden uh, screw connector, which is screwed in from the inside. So very clean on the outside. Let's flip it, shall we? Could do that all day. Feels great. Ball bearings in the pivot. It's everything you want. Screwed together, great. We knife does make a very good product after all. Very cool. Next up, the Civivis. Uh, we have two here. Uh, one I don't have on the table is the uh, new Baby Banter. So we actually sold out of those real quick, but we do have more on the way as far as I know. Uh, but I have a fixed blade and a folder, and here is the fixed blade. It is a Tough Knives design, the Concept 22. It's about 93 bucks. And this one, actually both of these uh, knives today kind of lean, or I'll hold up, hold them up so you can see what I mean, are really leaning into kind of the aesthetic thing. They're almost, they almost look cooler than they are useful. Not, not to say they're not useful. I'm, I'm just like stepping on everybody's toes today. There's just landmines all over the place. Uh, and I'm not, in, not even intending to either. I'll get to that. They, these knives can certainly cut perfectly well. Don't get me wrong on any of that. And they're built just fine. They, they're built great. Uh, the Concept 22, however, is a bit of a, uh, it, it stymied me for a little bit. I had to kind of wrap my head around it because although it, it's kind of wearing the, the accoutrements of a tactical design, it doesn't really strike me in hand as something overtly tactical. It's kind of designed, I think, to look cool, which there's perfectly valid reason and, and valid space for designs like that. But I'm challenging myself to figure out, okay, what? would I use it for? Well, the reason I say it's not particularly tactical feeling is the handle design here. The shape is pretty narrow and the cross section, the handle scales are fairly thin as well. So it's not exactly like a, like a confidence inspiring grip if you're actually thrashing this blade around in a you know combative scenario. That said, what is the blade? It's nice and wide. There's a lot of belly. It's not too thick and the grinds are high up enough. This is a slicer more than anything else. It almost feels more like, like a hunting knife or even a kitchen knife than a tactical thing. It's, it's kind of that style of knife dressed up in a tactical style, especially if you go with the all black version. This is a, a you know, OD Green G10 with a bead blasted blade, D2 steel, I should mention. And Thomas actually, I think, coined the perfect word for this, as I was kind of you know, talking through this with the, uh, the team out there, like, hey, what, what does this do really? I said, it looks cool. It's designed to look cool. It has a tactical vibe, but it's more culinary or hunting. It's well, tacticulinary. Tacticulinary, which I think fits this oh so aptly. <laughs> I really do. Uh, so that's what we're gonna go with. This is the Tacticulinary Concept 22. 4.8 inch D2 blade, plenty of belly on this you know, Tonto style blade, would definitely make a decent, or feels like it would make a decent skinning or game processing knife. Plenty of clearance here if you wanna use this front belly section on a cutting board. Although in any of those scenarios, I would probably take this, uh, this paracord fob off the bat. This is cord paracord, by the way, so you don't have the internal strands left. But they make that real easy because it's just looped onto the back there. It's not actually tied off. So real easy to uh, kind of swap that out when you don't need it and go to town. 
The sheath is Kydex. Nice click on it, comes with the Bob Terzola designed T-clip on the back, which has the same uh, standardized hole spacing as the popular tech lock on the back, except two of the holes have been substituted with, or substituted for, slots have substituted in for, I don't even, I can't even parse this today. Slots Instead of the two, All right, I got this. No, you don't. I even have an example. Here is the tech lock. I have one here. I always have one here next to the table to test things, test hole patterns out. Two of the holes on the T-clip have been replaced with slots, which will allow it to fit even more things, sheaths, than your standard tech lock. And they're fairly inexpensive to buy aftermarket too. We sell these, I think they're less than 10 bucks. I forget what they're going for right now. They don't lock in quite like the, uh, the tech lock does or the, uh, the clip doesn't, doesn't have a secondary locking claw here to keep it from coming loose, but it is pretty unlikely for it to come loose. And the belt slider for your belt width adjustment has even more adjustability since it is a slot as well. So basically it's a tech lock with slots for more compatibility. There we go. And we'll leave a link to that if you want to buy that for your stuff too, down in the description below. Whew, nailed it. Halfway there. <laughs> now the folder, the Civivi Gavco designed spiny dogfish. This one has a, I'm actually really fond of this blade. I said it was kind of leaning into the, uh, the cool factor. It definitely has that going on, but it's also just a really nice looking utility shape here. Uh, 5850 for this knife, the blade length, three and a half inches, 14C 28N steel, great stuff. So it's stainless, holds an edge pretty darn well, sharpens easily, and is pretty tough as well for a simple stainless, especially. Got a lot of durability in that blade. Has compound grinds, hollow, actually they're both flat, I should say, uh, but a little bit taller here at the back for a little more slicing efficiency and a little bit stouter, a little bit shorter here at the tip for a little more toughness, a little more kind of brute strength, even though this is overall not a brute strength design. It has the durability you need day to day, but it's concentrating on ease of carry and ease of slicing overall. G10 handles, a few different colors and blade finishes are av available on this lineup. This is the OD green. We have a deep carry pocket clip. Isn't reversible, unfortunately. You can see we don't have a uh, uh, screw holes on the other side. Part of that is because it is kind of angled to follow the angle curvature of the handle itself. Man, this is what happens when I get sick and I come back after a little while. I'm very sorry. Folks. It goes away for two days. And this is what happens. <laughs> Ball bearings in the pivot. Nice big thumb hole for opening. You can do all of those reverse flick and fidgety things with it, or you can just slow roll it open quite easily. Liner lock for security. And when it is open, you can really see how it's a good thing they kind of curved that clip to go with the handle. Otherwise, it might, they might have kind of run out of different places to put it that they were happy with. No matter. What are you going to do? Fairly affordable knife, great steel, great construction, Civivi stuff, especially in this price range, really makes a case for some of the, uh, the budget knives to beat out there. And this is no exception. All right, how about a Sprint Run? Sprint Run Spyderco Spy Opera. Here it is, $406 for this knife. It is a Spyderco design. It is made by Lion Steel, based off of their Opera folder, hence the name Spy Opera. There you go. Main difference between this and the, uh, the original Opera design, you've got the thumb hole for opening right there. 2.9 inch blade, Dama Steel, so you've got particle metallurgy performance and a nice classy presentation as well, especially when combined with that carbon fiber handle. I've actually always been a fan of this handle shape. It's not particularly striking of a shape, but it is a very useful shape. It is very neutral. It's going to work for all different sizes and configurations of hands out there. You know who I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> that was stupid. Yeah. <laughs> that made no sense at all. But knowing you, you're going to leave it in the edit anyway. Oh, yeah. Wire pocket clip. It is reversible. So it's usable on both sides. The 
Mid-mounted back lock is likewise perfectly symmetrical for lefties or righties. Same thing with the opening. So this is a very lefty friendly design if that's your thing. It feels great. I like the uh, detail on the fasteners here. That's really cool. I like that they maintained a crown spine and kept that through the back lock and the backspacer here. Easy enough to close one handed. Very, very smooth on the open right there. It's not jerky. It's not notchy or gritty at all. It is just excellent. There you go. Sprint run, however, so don't sleep on it too long. Uh, next up, the Essnix Knives Beer Buster Juniors drop, dropped, dropped last week. Here is one of them. Uh, this one comes in about 265. Actually, I think all of them do, except for the uh, the Dana Steel version, which is about 345. Uh, but the standard versions have an M390 blade. This one is the black Micarta, but there's also a titanium and I think a carbon fiber option to choose from as well. Blade itself, two and five eighths of an inch. Great little drop point shape. Perfect for this style of slip joint, for sure. These are made by Riot, who does a great job with all the knives they make, but especially, they are especially known for, I should say, their slip joint construction, because after all, listen to that. So, so good. Great walk and talk. Nice snap on the open right there. Perfect fit and finish all the way down the back, which speaking of leads us to the kind of reason for being on this knife, and that is the bottle opener cap lifter there at the back with the bottle shield on the front gives you the reason why these are the Beer Buster Juniors. Very, very cool. Feel great. About a three finger grip for me. I do have slightly larger than average hands, so take that with a uh, grain of salt for you. Nice hand rubbed horizontal finish as well. Just so, so good. Check those out. Should have called it the Suds Buster. Like the Sod Buster? Yes. That would have been pretty good. I wonder if it's, in fact, it's so good, I wonder if someone's already used that before or not. Comment section, let us know. All right, speaking of slip joints, that is an expensive one. 265 bucks is nothing to sneeze at. This next series actually would be a great place to look. And we've started to see them trickling in finally, and we've got a, a fairly good representation of Boker's traditional series 2.0. And the formula on all of these, I think is really good. You've got relatively affordable prices, and you've got D2 blade steel, and you've got German made construction. These are part of the, uh, the tree brand lineup. Now these don't quite fit the, uh, the kind of stringent rules to be able to call it a Zollingen made uh, Boker product. They are, uh, as far as I understand it, I hope I'm not getting any of this wrong. Some of the components and materials for these may come from outside of Germany, but they are put together uh, in Germany with some German made stuff as well. The result of that is you get a very well put together knife for not too much money. I've got a few of them here. This is the largest one. This is the Folding Hunter. Two blades. In fact, I don't even know if we have a blade length on here. No, we do not. Because typically, slip joint specs don't always come with blade lengths, oddly enough. It's about a four inch blade if you're measuring from the tip to the leading edge of the bolster. Both blades, D2, you've got the big clip point and as opposed to many hunters or many big trappers, uh, which this is kind of in the same vein of, rather than a big spay blade or big skinner blade, you've got a drop point blade instead, which in ways is, has some more precision to it than this particular clip point. Nice high polished finishes, jig bone handles on this, 88 bucks for a two blade, 5.25 inch closed length slip joint made in Germany, or at least put together in Germany. Sweet, <laughs> quite honestly, very, very good. Uh, I've got two other patterns here, but these are just a little bit, uh, a little sampling representative of all of the, uh, the cool stuff. This is the Trapper right here, $59 for this. Again, two D2 blades. You've got the more traditional spay blade that you would expect to see on a Trapper. Blade length on these, just over three inches. Great finishes, I love the, the, uh, the dyed bone on this one. I love the green. It's a really vibrant green, which you don't always see this amount of kind of saturation, this amount of brightness from a dyed bone, but you do right here. Very, very nice. If you'd prefer something locking, we have 
the Gentleman's Lockback from the traditional Series 2.0. Here it is with a sub three inch blade, D2 steel, yellow Delrin handles. Again, a very saturated yellow Delrin here, as opposed to some of the more kind of vintage faded yellow stuff. This has more of a new, like a, a, a new school bright finish to it, but still has that old school vibe. 47 bucks for this knife. That's pretty good. Feels great. Full flat grind on that bad boy. Great blade shape, little bit of character to it. It's not just a simple taper to the drop point here. There's a little bit going on with the spine. Hard to go wrong really with any of the, uh, the stuff in this series. Actually really liking that one. Anyway, check them out. Next up, a K bar. What are you saying? That's not new. Well, of course it is because we've got a different uh, engraved pattern on this one. 125th anniversary of K bar. First off, congrats are in order, of course. Uh, they've got a few versions of the classic USMC or the classic fighter, the Mark II, which they don't call it the Mark II in the catalog, but that was the, uh, the old governmental uh, right, or nomenclature for it. Uh, $110 for these, seven inch 1095 Crow Van blade and stacked leather handle. It is the classic K bar just with the 125 year engraved lettering on the front. Still comes with the classic leather sheath. And you'll see this one right here, if I can hold it still enough for Thomas, is the dog's head version. You've got, rather than the USMC or the Army or the US Navy uh, stamping here on the back, you've got the K-Bar dog's head thing going on, uh, which those are the, uh, the four versions of this that are available right now. I will say, however, the dog's head version is the only one with the enlarged base plate here with the hole through it. The, uh, the military branch stamped versions of this just have the, the standard cap on the end. How about that? Real cool, huh? Obviously it is a, a military fighting knife, but a lot of folks love to use this style of knife as an outdoor tool, survival, that sort of thing. This is certainly a valid choice. If you go down that route, you might want to get a, a base model, not with the engraving, if you're really going to beat it up and abuse it. So anyway, these are here now and they're cool. One more fixed blade, actually technically two, if you want to call it a kitchen knife, a fixed blade and a couple of uh, Japanese made things to taper off of this video. The first is the new version or a new uh, variant of the Enough 2 from Spyderco made in Seki City with a K390 blade, $224 for this. I love it. I am a big fan of this K390 steel. I've been using it on one of their Delicas for quite a while now. It holds an edge like you wouldn't believe. Just lasts and lasts. It's decently tough. It is not stainless. However, I ran the Delica through the clothes washer once on accident and it didn't rust. It actually got cleaner and, and less dirty looking when it came out the other side. I was very, very surprised, very flabbergasted. Your mileage may vary. Yes, this is, <laughs> don't, I wouldn't make a habit of, of taking it through there in any case. But I already liked this knife when it was available in VG10. The K390 really puts it over the top for me personally. And that's because this is such a carryable knife. It's such a, a very easy to take anywhere thing. But you've got a ton of capability and now even more so thanks to the edge retention of K390. The handle is just enough. As I've mentioned several times on this channel, my hands are slightly larger than average and what that means is I wear somewhere between a size large or extra large glove, depending on the manufacturer. I can just get all four of my fingers on that handle. It's injection molded with their bi-directional texturing. So it's got retention in pretty much every direction. And you've even got some contouring to it. It's not just a flat slab. It's a really kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Complex, yes, but that's not the sophisticated handle design is what I want to say. Works great. You've got finger guard protection. The blade stock thickness is only about 330 seconds of an inch. Uh, what do we have listed? Uh, eh, 0.118, so a little bit more than that, but not quite a full eighth of an inch. You've got distal taper on the blade with a full flat grind, nearly four inches or just about, yeah, just about a four inch blade. And almost all of that is sharpened edge. Tons of slicing potential here for an EDCable fixed blade. I dig it very much. The sheath is Hya. It is injection molded. Get rid of that. Clicks in 
really nicely. You've got the retention strap there with made out of leather. You've got Spyderco's G clip, which makes it easy to take on and off your belt, but only when you want to take it on and off your belt. The kind of J hooked clip on the end of that is going to keep it from sliding off uh, incidentally. So much, so much cutting potential on this blade right here. And the weight of it, man, 3.3 ounces for the blade itself. So easy to carry, so useful. And I didn't even talk about like tactical aspects of this. For people who use this as a, uh, a last ditch option in that regard, very easy to incorporate as well, I think. I need to buy one, don't I? Uh, sounds like you don't have enough. I just bought one of our Sebenzas a couple weeks though, ago though. It's called the, it's called the enough. But do I actually have enough? That's the, yeah. It's awesome. I'm a little, I'm a little too happy about that particular variant, but hey, what can I say? I dig it. One more Japanese knife for the end of the video, and it is a chef's knife. This is the Shun Naru, sorry, Narukami chef's knife, 230 bucks. Uh, there's also a paring knife, a six inch utility and a 10 and a quarter inch uh, chef's knife in this series available right now. I really like the specs on it. One, you can see right off the bat, or you probably can from the camera, linen micarta handles. Cool stuff, it's got a high polished finish, black and gray layering. So you've got an almost wood-like look if it were like a, like a blackened wood finish, kind of got that going on. And you've got a carbon steel blade. I believe it is a uh, it is a super blue edge. Uh, sorry, a blue two carbon steel edge, and it's put together with Kershaw Kai, the parent company who owns Shun and Kershaw. I should say Kai's process of composite blade technology. So you've essentially got the spine section of the knife and the edge section of the knife fit together like a puzzle piece, and you can see the edge right there. This is not like a core of a steel running all the way through. This lets them put the more expensive steel right at the edge and the less expensive, tougher steel and more stainless steel. Actually, I think uh, we've got, actually, I don't know if the top end of this uh, is stainless or not. It is, I just, I just found it on the spec sheet. So stainless up here, carbon steel behind the edge itself. Looks cool, it's comfortable, the balance is perfect. I love the crown spine all the way out the, to the uh, to the tip, so it's very easy to control without being uncomfortable there. Really cool. And this sticker comes off. It says carbon steel blade right there. Check those out if you're looking for something a little bit more interesting than another triple riveted black handled kitchen knife. I think it's pretty cool. And that's what we're going to end on. That's all we have for this week. Thanks for uh, sticking with me as my uh, my fever addled brain gets back into the swing of filming things here at the Knife Center will be better next time. But thank you. If you want to get your hands on any of these knives, tell us about them in the comments, but also check out the links in the description to take you to knifecenter.com. While you're there, don't forget about our Knife Rewards program, because if you're buying one of these knives today, it's a cool thing to be able to earn some free money on a future one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera, and we're signing off. See you next time.